one thing I do know. That though I was blind, now I see. Mm. <laughs> yes! Uh, yeah! <laughs> Why do the religious leaders not accept Yeshua? They didn't want him to be the Messiah because mm -hmm. it undermined their authority. Grab your tiny cup of coffee. We're going to react to season <laughs> four, episode three. Let's go. Your Majesty, please take some nourishment. Has the child been restored? Not yet. But the doctor says he is fighting, my lord. And leave me to my prayers. That Shiva needs you. The child needs I you. Said leave. What is needed? My repentance. <laughs> I do like this depiction here of David because mm -hmm. it reminds me of how can like there's a difference between confession and repentance. Mm -hmm. It's like you can say the words and you need to say the words mm -hmm. like you're sorry you did this and yeah. please forgive me but then he's also just demonstrating his mm -hmm. heart of repentance yeah you know you you look at psalm 51 was written in light of this situation right and he says you know what, what you require is a broken and contrite heart mm -hmm. i mean sometimes you read that and you're just kind of like oh yeah i want to be sorry but like right. When you're when you're fasting and you're in sackcloth and ashes like he is portrayed here there's a brokenness to right. that that is like visceral and right. real and yeah yeah the hebrew word for repentance is teshuva mm -hmm. and the root of it is to turn shuv means mm -hmm. to turn right and so it's you know it's not just this simplistic thing it's turning your whole mm -hmm. whole like you were talking about something very holistic right yes so he's turning his his heart his right. actions his mind mm -hmm. like everything toward god reminds me of the parable of the prodigal son mm -hmm. where he's turning and coming back yeah to the father right yeah. he when he went into sin he mm -hmm. went away from the father mm -hmm. and then he turned and right. came back to the father and then you see them running and embracing and killing the catted the the catted faff and <laughs> <laughs> right to each his own <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't really agree with killing cats and stuff yeah but, <laughs> yeah. but, but you're right there's this this necessary i'm coming out of agreement with the sin like i'm i don't want to do that anymore right and so it's a, like you're saying, it's a turning. Mm -hmm. like I want to get away from that and go towards you. Rome assigned me to this hellhole because they thought I couldn't hack it in one of the bigger cities. But oh, they changed their tune when my tribute record posted among the highest in the region. Now, my ledgers are in the red. I told you to make life difficult for the followers of Jesus. They have enforced curfews and implemented strict... Taxes were the only leg I had to stand on in the Empire, and those vulgar pilgrims have cut it off. What can be done, Dominus? I'm done giving you ideas, Gaius. No more conversations. No more of me mentoring you. Results only. The tent city will shrink by ten cubits a day, starting now. Say it back to me, Primmy. Awkward. <laughs> so Matthew was the tax collector or the mm -hmm. publican mm -hmm. of you know this area, and what they would do is they would you know take a percent over. Mm -hmm. So Rome said, "Hey, we need this much from this region or right. whatever," and then they would add whatever percent they wanted and then mm -hmm. they had the authority of Rome behind them to get the taxes so right they were having their cake and eating it too exactly so now that Matthew's gone mm. they're kind of showing that I don't know maybe the the guy they hired didn't do a good job mm. he's right. saying that now they're they're not making uh, enough yeah you don't you don't think about that context very often at least I, I guess I don't like you know, we have a, a tax collector for a region, mm -hmm. and then he becomes a follower of right. Yeshua. Okay, well, that leaves a 
a oh, void exactly in the area right. of tax collecting. Right. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe I mean, Matthew was really good at it. Right. 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 And then ne- the next guy wasn't. Well, we don't know. I kind of think it's interesting, you know, idea because mm-hmm. he's the head of Capernaum here. Right. Right. Well, that's the home. Mm-hmm. Base of Yeshua's ministry, right? right. That's the central HR, location, right? yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, what does that mean? It means revival, most likely. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so revival is breaking out in the town, and so right. Rome's not getting this extra mm-hmm. percent or something. And it, it could have actually really Been made it life difficult on the Roman magistrates and mm-hmm. whatever. And if there were large crowds following Yeshua all over the place, that would cause some disturbance in the peace. Right. You know what I mean? Pax and, Romana. Exactly, yeah, yeah. right? And so they it would have been noticed. Exactly. Like, you know, 5,000 men and on the, you know, the shores of Galilee, like, that's a that's a large it's crowd. Huge. Six are huge. It's yeah. massive. That's good. That reminds me of how I think Nazareth... Mm-hmm. First century Nazareth maybe had a thousand to three thousand people who lived there. That's it. So yeah. we're not talking about like a modern huge city, right? So if you yeah, if you had five thousand, if you had one thousand, right. that's like a ton of people. Exactly. You know? So if you have ten thousand people show up for a gathering, that's ten times potentially as yes. much as a, as a local city. Yeah. And the Romans would have known all about it. Right. I mean. Right. And they would have been nervous. <laughs> <laughs> right, because. Before that, you've got people that are, you know, insurrectionists mm-hmm. Absolutely. and people that are planning overthrows yep. and maybe even they've got the Maccabees yeah. in their minds from Absolutely. back here, you know. No, there are all these different zealot groups throughout the mm-hmm. first century and they would lead people, yeah. uh, you know, they'd follow them and then Rome would crush them. It was this back and forth reality right. of all these different uh, zealot uh, groups and charismatic leaders and stuff like that. Ten cubits a day. Ten cubits a day? What? The tenth city will shrink by that much. Or? Or, or you'll be a centurion again. Maybe something even lower, depending on how I feel when I wake up that day. Yes, Thomas. I'm not going to lose my job or my future because I hastily promoted some Germanic tax collector to escort. You see, like, people do this in their anger. Then he went right after his identity, Mm, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just this, like, low jab. He's Germanic. Mm. Something you can't change about yourself, right? Mm, Yeah, I'm glad you pointed out. That's, like, your ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying, I mean, he's just, that's, like, the lowest thing you can really do to somebody Mm -hmm. is to insult Mm -hmm. who God created them to be. Right. Yeah, in fact, Nasty. the different Roman legions were actually full of people from all over the Roman Empire. Mm. So it was a class system, and there was this elite reality. If you were from Rome, for sure. If you're right. from even Italy, he's obviously uh, from you know the Germanic area. Right. Uh, so you had this. It reminds me of like the 10th Roman Legion, for example. That's the legion that was mainly responsible for destroying the temple Mm -hmm. in 70 AD. The 10th Roman Legion was made up of Turks, Arabs, and another, you know, Middle Eastern uh, group of people. How interesting, right? That Mm -hmm. was the Roman Legion. Wow. You know, usually when we think of Roman soldiers, you think that they're all Italians. Right. You know, there's not enough Italians. Mm -mm. To you know, fill the entire military of the Roman Empire. Right, because you, you just have to remember that their kingdom was expanding and taking right. over places and a, right. adopting into their yes. military forces those mm-hmm. people. And it was those locals who know the geography, right? The topography, how to live, you mm-hmm. know, in a you know that specific arid environment or right. whatever, how to live off the land. Mm-hmm. You need the locals to be a part of the army in order for the army to thrive. Sure. If you want to go deeper in your understanding of God, the Bible, and why Israel matters today, you can become a Grafted Ambassador. You'll get our five-week online course for free. You'll be able to join our monthly exclusive live Zoom. Exclusive. And we'll even send you a Grafted Trucker hat. That's right, so click on the link in the description below. Jesus gave Simon a new name. 
Who wants more wine? Peter. The Rock. Are you happy now? He said, like a stone for the foundation of a house. Mm. So then, what are your new names? This is ridiculous. You've done more for Jesus than Simon fivefold. Five? Those rows you planted in Samaria? The notes you're keeping of his words and deeds? Matthew's recording too. And controlling the crowds at the sermon. Staying behind to wait for Simon when he was full of bitterness and doubt over what happened to Eden. That's for Leaving your jobs to follow him? Everyone did that, Dima. Regardless, you boys deserve real standing and blessings. Yes, Salome. Zeb, this is important. When people see Jesus, our boys should always be right by his side. If that's what Jesus wants, then that's what will happen. That's not what he said in the Corazin Plateau. What? You don't remember? Ask, and it will be given to you. <sighs> Seek, and you will find. Knock, Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who <laughs> seeks, finds. I can't like, I hear can't you, take it anymore. Are you cringing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't think that's what it means. I, I think the, the interpretation may be a couple degrees off, mm -hmm. right? He knows people are gonna misunderstand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. These are his, some of his closest. Yeah. And they're not understanding his words. Why would he? teach that way. I think part of it is is in what they're saying so that you will ask and seek and knock. It's like it it elicits more relationship and more conversation and more digging and searching and figuring it out. And I mean Luke's Luke's telling of that ask seek knock the answer is the Holy Spirit. Mm. When he says the Father will, will 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 give the Holy Spirit to those who ask, seek, and knock. Mm. And so, it's good. Then that's this. I thought it's not more stuff. It's not. <laughs> the answer is <laughs> more honor, prestige, and wealth. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, for him, for, to him be all the glory, to all the honor, to all the authority, power, mm. and dominion. Right. But this conversation is very awkward. Yes. And it, I mean, we've we've noted it before, but the arguments about who's the greatest, like maybe there's deeper meaning to it in scripture, but to me it, it feels very human. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like what what wait, what? Why are you doing that? Like right. ah, you know. Right. Like don't 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 have that conversation at least not even there, you know? Right. Like now it's like well, somebody was over there writing it down, mm -hmm. you know, like you wouldn't expect it, but Yeshua's closest are Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Peter, they're like, I don't know. Why, why would the Lord choose Peter? Right. And and then James and John, like, they're still wrestling through this mm -hmm. at the Passover meal. Exactly. Exactly. Like, that's at the very end, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's so interesting that, like, the three closest to Yeshua uh -huh. are... We don't know as much about the rest of them, mm -mm. but we can just assume if if the three closest were still needing a lot of refinement. Mm. I don't know. It also you can see it as encouraging. Yeah, of, you can for sure. Oh wow, we're a work in progress. <laughs> yep. You know, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, and you know, we don't become <laughs> righteous right away. You know, we are yeah. imperfect vessels, yep. you know. In need of sanctification by yeah. his grace. And it's mm -hmm. like you're saying, it's worked out day after right. day after day. After We're going day. from glory mm -hmm. to glory. Mm -hmm. For sure. Back to the awkward. We can really just ask him anything. What else could ask and it will be given to you mean? A I lot, a lot, a lot of things. When you are seeking first the kingdom of God. Mm. This there is go. about there. the kingdom of God. This is about the kingdom of God. That, that's classic. Like, Lord, give me a million dollars. I'll use the money for your kingdom. You know, like that prayer. <laughs> I'll use it for you. That's so good, though. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. That's a good way to teach. I like the way they're doing this. This is funny. It's, and it's 
it's awkward and mm-hmm. difficult, but it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Jesus has begun handing out titles and roles, starting with Simon. Don't you want influence? Don't you want the blessing that comes from being closest to God? I don't want you to be last or far from God. And if you don't ask for this authority now, others will get in front of you. <laughs> I need to explain this to you. Ima is right. If we can ask for anything, so long as we seek first the kingdom, so can everyone else. I don't know. The group has been doing so well. The grieving for the baptizer has been complete. Uh, uh, Peter forgave Matthew for everything that happened between them. Simon forgave Matthew? Peter. Yes, yes, hugs and everything. That really does deserve an name change. You don't change the subject. You just don't want to cause a stir, Ima. <laughs> that was so great. That does deserve a name change. <laughs> That's great, though. Wow. Really, Zebedee's locked in. He is, yeah. He's right there. He's yeah. getting a little dominated by his wife here, uh-huh. but he's kind of locked in. Yeah, he's seeing it. He's seeing it for what mm-hmm. it is. And she's missing it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, Yeshua says, you know, to humble ourselves, yep. and then he will lift us up. Mm-hmm. And I love the teaching where if we try to do his job... Mm-hmm then he'll do our job. Yeah. So, you know, that you don't seeking, want that. You don't want that. taking that for ourselves, that's that's not how it works. The yeah. Son of Man came to serve, mm-hmm. not to be served. He even tells that parable where he's like, hey, here's some good advice for you. Mm-hmm. Like, when you go to a party, don't sit mm-hmm. at the head of the table because right. then the guy's going to come up to you and be like, uh, you need to move. Excuse me. But go sit yourself in a humble place. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to come to you. Right. Hey, hey, my friend, like, come on, come up here. Exactly. And then you'll be exalted, right? Yeah. And so there's this, like, you got you to go low and mm-hmm. stay low. And that's 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 yeah. how the kingdom goes. Good. Yeah. Go low, stay low. Yeah. I mean, and, and the rest is up to him. The arrangements for the Kiddushin are nearly all in place. John has agreed to be the witness on my side. <laughs> Jesus has agreed to serve as witness on your side. The chaperone thing is just kind of funny. Yeah. Like Andrew just standing there, hanging out, looking really awkward. <laughs> I, I do my, I don't mind it though. You know, oh, like yeah. you know, one of these days, you know, if our daughters are dating. Mm-hmm. I will just chaperone the whole time. And you'll just stand awkwardly behind them, twenty feet away, <laughs> mildly listening. There's one thing left: the object of value. I thought we agreed that... I know, I know. But I wanted to get you something. It's actually best to I set it up this way. I what I wanted right. it to be back when we just worked. I know we agreed on no gifts, but... But I got you something I'm very so expensive. <laughs> I'm so amazing. I got something anyway. Do you think this is a good idea? What? This sermon. When I invited guys, he seemed very alarmed that we were planning a public gathering of any kind. Yeah, with all the heat coming in from both Rome and the Pharisees. I think it's a terrible idea, but what can he do, huh? He is who he is. We can't run away from every conflict. Besides, I didn't think a lot of things Jesus did were good ideas, huh? Those things turned out, huh? Hmm? I, I like that, uh, that little... That little line there where he's just like, a lot of things didn't turn out the way we thought. You know, th- those types of things. And I'm sure following Jesus, like we said with, hey, we're going to Caesarea Philippi? Like, mm-hmm. are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like, that seems like a bad idea. Right. There must have been a number of those moments as a s- disciple of Yeshua over the course of the, the mm-hmm. few years. Of like, are we sure about this? Right. Are we sure we're going to go? Where, why, where, you know, mm-hmm. fill in the blank. Like, hey, guys, I'm going to send you out. Don't take anything. Right. Wait, 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 what? You know, hey, we're going to go to Jerusalem now. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 what? You know, like, right. so many times. They're going to try and kill you. Right. It's like, yeah, that's where we want to go. That's where we're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My inclination is that we stay here. <laughs> right. And we go in the house and we yeah. shut the door, right? And so, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. But, so I like the portrayal of 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 this, like, oh, mm-hmm. man, this tension. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. Right. He is who he is. That's what mm-hmm. Peter said. Shula. Master. You weren't expecting to see me? <laughs> It'll never get old. It's, uh, it's just that. Um, what? We overheard that there's been some sort of 
edict from Jerusalem. That's where they usually come from. How about you? By name. If anyone catches you on blasphemy, they are to have you taken to the Sanhedrin. There's, there's more. Rabbi Akiva said that anyone who confesses Jesus as the Christ is to be put out of the synagogue. Well, who did you hear that from? Has it been enforced? It doesn't matter. I will be direct with the Pharisees today. They've gone too far. How long has this man been here? It's Uzziah. We've been friends since my malady started, but hmm. he's been blind since birth. Big James. Yes, Rabbi. Drop some water from the well. Would you introduce me to your friend? What are you? You can't. I know that look. <laughs> yeah. Why not? It's Chappelle. That'll make this more fun. <laughs> I do love the miracles. Oh man. Man, they're so it's fun. So good. Isaiah, this is Jesus, the teacher. The one who healed Shula and me. He knows Barnaby. He's not deaf. Barnaby, he's not deaf, he's, he's blind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Barnaby's great. I, I love Barnaby. Okay, I think I said it last episode. Uh, I want to hang out. Shabbat Shalom, Uzziah. Shabbat Shalom. Rabbi. Please, answer this for us. Who sinned? Uzziah or his parents that he was born blind? You're a friend of his? Yes, and we've wandered for years. It's not that this man sinned, or his parents, but that the work of God might be displayed in him. They have to be like, what in the world is he doing? <laughs> For sure. He's spitting. Spitting in mud. Like, that's like a... It's strange. It's, it is strange. Like, I, there's no way around mm -hmm. it. Like, I, I don't know that I've ever heard a good teaching on the why behind <laughs> him doing that. So it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. I mean, super cool. But... Right. The Lord has an interesting uh, relationship with dirt. Right. So, yeah, that's a good way to say so. it. It's, cre it's new creation. Hmm. Right? This is a creative miracle. Yep. Right? So he's, we're, ma we're made from the dust of the earth. Ooh. He's making some new eyeballs for him. Sounds like you're giving a teaching on it right now, you know? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows the ways of the Lord? Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, if. He's not a genie in the bottle, mm. and you just kind of mm -hmm. rub the genie, and then the miracle happens. Right. You know? Right. It's like it happens different ways and, you know, different times, and not always the way you wanted it, and, you know. I mean, yeah, I don't know that I would want, you know, spitty mud rubbed on my right. eyes. <laughs> exactly. Sounds uncomfortable and kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is the Messiah, so. Yeah. <laughs> You would take it as the man for born blind. sure. <laughs> you don't really care at all. You wouldn't refuse that mm -hmm. a bit. Even if you weren't blind, you wouldn't refuse exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> now wash. Here to your right. That's it. How does it look? <laughs> mm. 
Hi guys. I love being able to see these miracles. Like this, that's one of the fun things about this show is that Absolutely. you get to see the miracles of Yeshua portrayed. You get to see what it looked like, you know, or what it could have looked like. Um, and yet we also know that the, this depiction is a little different than the text. That mm -hmm. This actually happened in Jerusalem. And then after Yeshua put the mud on his eyes, he told him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he didn't actually see until after he washed himself mm -hmm. in the pool of Siloam. Yeshua's claim, messianic claim, mm -hmm. uh, he's trying to authenticate that mm -hmm. through his miracles. Right, right. Right. They point to who he is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he says, you know, well, may his sins be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And then like, well, only God can forgive sins, right? Mm -hmm. And then... So watch this. Well, well I'm going to do miracles, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to show you, mm -hmm. rise up and walk, or I'm going to heal the blind man, mm -hmm. and that's proving to you that I am God. Yeah, he just said, I'm the light right. of the world. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to illuminate this guy's eyes. Right. Right. Check this out. So this is a what you could call a messianic miracle, where mm -hmm. the man born blind... Mm -hmm is now healed by the Messiah himself. Yeah. And so some had this understanding that only the Messiah mm. could actually heal a man born blind. Yeah. So he's doing that. Uh, but yeah, they're, this is not in Jerusalem. They're not uh, at the Pool of Siloam. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see the pool of yeah, Siloam yeah. Be fun. Be fun. when they do uh, scenes in Jerusalem later. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, there are so many miracles mm -hmm. that, you know, they're just combining it because right. they, if they just did a series about the miracles, mm -hmm. it, it'd be too much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, their books couldn't even fill all the pages, exactly. right? <laughs> the film couldn't hold all the tape right. uh, of the miracles that Yeshua did. It's a fun chapter. It's John 9. Go, Go check it and out. read John 9. Yep. Exactly. That's okay. great. What do you say about the... He's obviously a prophet. Look what he did to me. Messiah, are you? <sighs> Your eyes. <sighs> Can you see me? <laughs> well, this is your son? That's yes. Cool. Uh, it's, but he was uh, born blind? Yes. How can he see? They told us the teacher from the... <laughs> well, we know he's our son and he was born blind. But... How he sees and who opened his eyes, we do not know. Have you asked him? He's of age. You need to tell me how he did this. I already told you and you wouldn't listen. <laughs> All I know is this man must be from God. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. He must be the Christ or he couldn't have done this. No. If all of this is true, give glory only to Adonai for this. This teacher from Nazareth is a sinner. Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know. That though I was blind, now I see. Mm. <laughs> yes! Oh. That was so good! That was, that that was, was so good! Yeah! Get him! Get him! <laughs> that reminds me of like when John the Baptist was like the running uh, deliverance. Oh, yeah. you remember that? And he's, and he's like, like yeah! <laughs> oh, I forgot all about that scene. That was so fun. Oh my goodness. I love this back and forth, mm. this this questioning of the son and his parents, and I, I think it's depicted really well. Um, and then the way, what well, they call him Uzziah here, and the way what they way, the way he tells it and acts mm -hmm. it out, I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think it's great. You know the edict. Anyone who blasphemes by calling this sinner Christ, he's banned. No, please. He doesn't know what he's saying. Please. We just know he was born out. blind. No! What would the implications be of being cast out of the synagogue? Well, I mean, that was your lifeblood. I mean, hmm. right? I mean, it's like your congregation, the local expression of worship and gathering. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was like, a, you know, remember, this is an honor 
shame culture. Mm. So, so it's a heavy uh, thing. Yeah, it's a very heavy thing. I mean, you're beginning to see the the division that's happening. Yeah, you know, Yeshua says that he actually comes to bring division. Right. <laughs> he also comes to bring unity. Yeah. But it's because you have to unite with him. Yeah. And you know if you if you experience the miracle of God, mm -hmm. and then other people are telling you mm -hmm. that's not God, right? This is where theology goes out the window when you have experienced the miraculous, right? You know, you're right. like, it doesn't matter if your theology aligns with it or not. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was blind. And now I see. I couldn't yep. care less about your theology. Right. Because I experienced God today. Right. Nazarene, I just spoke to a man who claims you healed his blindness. Today. On Shabbat. Is there a question coming? I was told you put mud <laughs> on his eyes. Where did you get mud knowing you're not supposed to make healing concoctions on Shabbat? It was easy. I just spit on the dirt. What? You touched his face with filth. Cleanliness. That's what you're focused on? You claim on? to be a rabbi, to be the son of God, and you don't honor purity laws even on the most sacred day of the week? You Pharisees. You cleanse the outside of a cup and the dish, and then you eat and drink food that goes into a body that inside is full of greed and wickedness. <laughs> So Yeshua is going after a lot of things here. They're, they're kind of Tons. bringing different passages from mm -hmm. the, the Gospels mm -hmm. all kind of together. Because uh, Yeshua was oftentimes trying to bring correction, revelation to the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's talking here briefly about cleanliness. Yeah. And, you know, if you really broke it down, the context uh, was about the ritual hand washing. Mm hmm and how they're, they've added these rules. Mm -hmm. He calls them traditions of men. Yeah. And saying, well, you're defiled if you don't do these proper hand washings. And he's trying to get to the heart of the matter here. Mm -hmm. That it's about what comes out of a man. You know, right. sexual immorality, mm -hmm. greed. You know, uh, these different aspects of us. That if, if we think ritual... Hand washing is is more important than that. Then we're I mean it's back to the weightier matters of the law. We mm. we're you're really missing it here. Yeah. You know you're yeah. putting all this emphasis on traditions of men, and that's causing you to forget the significance of the actual written commandments. Yeah. But Joseph, we tithe everything so the poor can benefit, down to the smallest plants grown in our gardens. And to that I say, woe to you Pharisees. You tithe mint and dill and cumin, measuring carefully the last speck while neglecting what is actually important of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. You blind guides straining out an act while swallowing a camel. So that's really important, I think, to see in the Gospels mm -hmm. is that there are all these uh, oral or extra-biblical traditions mm -hmm. And that he, Yeshua is actually, when he's correcting and going after the religious leadership that seems kind of harsh, mm -hmm. he's not ever going after the written commandments. Right, right. He's not saying, I don't care about Sabbath anymore. Mm -hmm. Like written commandments, he's saying he's going after their, their extra biblical fences and traditions that they've yeah. added to the text mm -hmm. and saying your additions are actually causing you to miss uh, more important yeah. commandments yeah. and the heart of what I was trying to teach in my Torah. All of you, this man is dangerous. He's leading you astray. His words bring hope and healing. His words are blasphemous, heretical. And I say woe to you, Pharisees, rude. for you love the best seat in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. Take it back. Right now. You can't hear insulting words. Oh, I am just getting started. Religious leaders are essentially the holders of the traditions, right? Yeah. And so when he's questioning and correcting their traditions, mm -hmm. that undermines what? Their authority, right. for sure. So this is why it creates this mm -hmm. tension, because you're undermining their authority, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's back to the Yeshua is demonstrating his authority, how? Through the miraculous. Yeah, yeah. Through the power. He's like, but 
but I'm God. Mm -hmm. And you're you're missing who the real authority is. Like so I feel like this is a significant mm. we have to realize that the clash, like why do the religious leaders not accept Yeshua? And many people struggle with that, you know, like, well, why didn't they declare mm -hmm. Yeshua as the Messiah? Yeah. It's because they didn't want him to be the Messiah because mm -hmm. it undermined their authority. Right. Has the preacher gotten to you? <laughs> Perhaps you want Quintus to take the fall for another ride. Is that it? That's it. <clears throat> I was wrong about you. If I did, what would you do with me? Rome doesn't penalize ambition, Premi. But you are taking a huge gamble. One of you won't survive this. And this was a time in history where this is the story of the haves and the have not. There's no middle class. That's a, you know, in post industrial revolution reality. Most yeah. of human history was there were the haves and the have nots. Yeah. So to give up your authority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> meant that you also became a commoner, right. if you will, right. you know? And so this is, you know, they didn't want to give up their privileged class right. uh, within society because it came with, what, wealth, mm -hmm. prestige, better food, you know, dress, all these things, yeah. right? Yeah, and you, you see him, you see Yeshua throughout the Gospels a handful of times having people count the cost of following him. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, well, the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. Right. Hey, you know, you're, you need to go sell all you have and then come and follow me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some people did, and some mm -hmm. people didn't. And history teaches us people love power mm -hmm. and that people don't want to give up power right. and right. privilege. Right. Like those are the most wars are fought about that, right? right? Throughout all of history. Yeah. And so you're seeing the chosen guys display different, you know, power struggles happening. You got the Roman power struggle happening. Mm -hmm. You got the Sanhedrin. You have the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees right. on a local level. Well, it all has to come under yeah. alignment under the king. And Yeshua's showing up in Capernaum is shaking that up. Quintus, yeah. the Roman magistrate, he's wrestling with the exact exactly. same issue, yeah. and they're trying to show us that. Right. Well, if he doesn't have the money, that means what? Mm -hmm. His status? Yep. He's going to get lowered in status. Mm -hmm. It's all about status yeah. during this time in history, yeah, which is good. why Yeshua coming to the earth mm -hmm. is the great equalizer. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's yeah. saying there's no longer what? Yes. Slave nor free. Mm. I mean, just that statement right there. Massive statement. What you're saying, what he means there is that slaves and freemen have equal status before yeah. God. We're all saved the same way. Right. No one's better than anybody else. I mm -hmm. mean, this is like radical stuff, radical. you know? I love the way Dietrich Bonhoeffer puts it, that we're all underneath the cross in need of his grace. Exactly. That's where we all reside. Right. <laughs> and then he says, male nor female, yep. which is another radical yep. thing yep. in the first century. And of course, Jew nor Gentile. Because mm. Gentiles thought Jews were second class citizen. Right. And Jews thought Gentiles were second class mm -hmm. in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, and he's like, no, you're both wrong. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Before me, you're all the same. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is why Yeshua is so amazing. Yep. Because he destroys the class system. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I love that we're, uh, we're talking about just this you have, you have the divinity of Jesus and the human, humanity of Jesus and that there's it's, it's a mystery and it's like, how do you grasp that? But but just reminding of ourselves of, of the divinity of Jesus, that he is the way, the mm -hmm. truth, the life. He is the resurrection right. of, and the life. He is the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Just like we... We have to have both, right. and it's so hard for yeah. us to like maintain that understanding right. in our brains, but right. meditating on it is really helpful. Right. <laughs> I just love that it's a person. Oh, I think that's one of the reasons you love The Chosen, because you get to see Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Like, here he is. Right. Like, like you said, right. like it's not just a theology or something. Mm -hmm. Like, they're having the right uh, <clears throat> beliefs right. or the right, you know, understanding even. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, all those things are... It's embodied the right relationship. In, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't want the law without the lawgiver. Exactly. 
I mean, that that's the whole reality. Here's the lawgiver who came, and he can clarify what those laws actually meant. Okay, we're all ears. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Should be. Should be. Arrest Jesus. No, Dominus. Arrest Jesus of Nazareth, Gaius. No. Arrest Jesus, or you will hang. I will not. Wow. That's awesome. Julius! <laughs> Arrest this man for dereliction. Wow. He's given his life. Yeah. I love that. That was fun. I mean, that's that's, that's that is not a minor radical transformation incident right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a whoa. He just laid down status, mm -hmm. comfort, yep. position, authority. He went like this. Wow. <laughs> and like he said, he said he wants to have him hanged. Mm -hmm. I mean, potentially mm -hmm. could be killed. Right. Like, whoa. Because you're, because in, in, I think Roman first century allegiance, right? Like, this is, you're not obeying this guy, right. which means you're not submitting to Caesar. Exactly. Who is God. Right. Right. So turned yeah. upside down. And in a military context, you obey orders. Right. 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 Or else the army doesn't. The army cannot function. Exactly. You're not, you're not even supposed to think twice. Mm -mm. It's like you do it, you don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So he's just going against yeah. everything. A complete change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You! Where did Jesus go? Emma! Where is he? Run away! Answer me! Emma! Jesus! Where is he? Thomas! Thomas! Come on, let's find the others. Stay back! Where is he? Stop! You know, we've talked about this many times, how mm -hmm. once you put the Bible into film, yeah. you're going to have to add to the story mm -hmm. because we don't know exactly what they looked like. We don't know exactly what they were saying mm -hmm. along the road. We I mean, There's so much that you have to add to the story. Mm -hmm. And so I think by definition, it becomes uh, storytelling. It becomes uh, a way to teach mm -hmm. by adding to the story. So Midrash really uh, is a Jewish tradition of, yeah, adding to the biblical stories, filling in the gaps, mm -hmm. uh, not just to, not really to make sense of the story, but literally to teach. Mm. Uh, almost like a parable, mm. where it's not right. like, parables aren't necessarily true, mm -hmm. 
but you tell parables in order to teach. To illuminate a truth. Right. right. Yeah. So they're clearly trying to use, you know, the story of Thomas and his doubting. Right. It's like, well, why was Thomas doubting? Mm hmm you know and doubting resurrection right. right why was it hard for him mm -hmm. to embrace yeshua uh, as opposed to anyone else sure so yeah. he had a story mm -hmm. right i mean right. he had some issues wounds in his past mm -hmm. we obviously don't really know what they were but they're right. saying yeah. they're suggesting maybe it was something like this right. and that's why it was hard for him to really trust and believe and he needed to touch mm -hmm. the hands of Yeshua at his side to believe mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so if you could if you can understand it in the that midrashic mm -hmm. perspective then you can see oh and they're trying to bring you into the story a little deeper uh, they're not trying to say this is how it was that's yeah, good there's yeah. no way you talk to Dallas Jenkins <laughs> right he's not they're not even tiny bit trying to right. suggest this actually happened. He'd say, go go read the Gospels. Exactly. That's what Dallas would tell you. Right. Yeah. But it does bring you into the story. Right. Uh, right. And that's what film does. Mm -hmm. That's, if, if you don't like that part, then don't watch The Chosen, right? I mean, mm -hmm. read, just read your text, read yeah. the Bible, mm -hmm. but this does bring you into uh, the story it's itself. It's good. I think that's mm -hmm. helpful. It's good. <laughs> Healer, fix this. Thomas. You're here now, Rabbi. Please. This is a mistake. Thomas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rabbi, you don't have to let this happen. Just take it back. Just take it back. She, she, she might not be dead yet. You can hear, right? It is not her time. I love you, Thomas. He loves you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wow. What hits me is that following Yeshua mm -hmm. costs. You know, this is one of those controversial parts of The Chosen where, mm -hmm. you know, they're presenting Yeshua not healing mm -hmm. somebody. Right. And they did this before with uh, Little James. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, I know it's challenging. So it's like, did Jesus heal? It does seem like he healed everybody. Mm hmm that he came in contact with. I mean, that's definitely, I would say, the essence of what the Gospels are trying to communicate. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I agree. all the crowds came and mm -hmm. like, they were healed and like, so that's the takeaway I think we're supposed to get from from the Gospels. Right. That, that was this demonstration of his authority and that who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. Yeshua gets presented like, Follow him, and he's going to take care of all your problems, and you're going to be blessed. And it's like it, there's this suffering that comes. It's like we say we want to be like Yeshua. It's like, well, he ends up giving everything. Mm -hmm. So it's this, he's what, it's a disciple, right? This is the, the Apostle Thomas. It's like mm -hmm. he's called, come and die, yep. right? Come and suffer with me yep and yep. so i mean it's that's a it's a high cost mm -hmm. to follow yeshua yeah i mean even he even yeshua says it he's like in this world you will have trouble mm -hmm. but take heart 
as I've overcome the world. Right. We live in this reality of tension. Mm-hmm. And in, in where we are in the Midwest, I mean, we don't feel it as much as right. our brothers and sisters around the world that are undergoing persecution and exactly. all sorts of, you know, that's that's a reality that we have family of Messiah that, mm-hmm. that lives deeply. Right. And it's hard for us to reckon with the suffering sometimes, mm-hmm. but... Again, we are called to deny right. ourselves, to yeah. take up our cross, and to follow Him. And I think those who are suffering, mm-hmm. when they watch something like this, mm-hmm. it actually creates a strengthening and a hope. And it's like that this is a common theme throughout history mm-hmm. of what it means to be a follower of Yeshua. Right. Mm-hmm. This, this is... yeah. The cost, the cost of discipleship. Of discipleship. The cost of yeah. being a disciple of Yeshua. Yeah. And is it worth it? Absolutely. Yes. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you like our videos, don't forget to become a grafted ambassador. Click on the link in the description below. Midrash. Midrash. Help me. Mm. Midrash. Midrash. That's like a, a rash on the mid right. section. Right in the little topical ointment.